Okay. Um, this is the re-recording of lecture three. I've got to record this lecture um, uh, during the, the, the meeting. So lecture three and lecture four, we will talk about relative entropy method in the mean field limit problems. Um, most of most of part uh, of lecture three, um, you can find in my previous uh, talk uh, given in like uh, probability seminar and uh, Tsinghua University uh, two months ago, which is available in, uh, in the web page website. So I just uh, briefly uh, reveal uh, the topic we are talking about in this lecture series. So the mean field limit is one of the large n limit. So this type of problem study a uh, bridge, uh, study um, passing from microscopic description to macroscopic description. So uh, this idea first uh, dates back to 19th century due to Maxwell and Boltzmann. Uh, it's part of Huber's six problem. Um, yeah, there are many, many type of this problem uh, and the uh, mean field limit is one of them. Okay. So in kinetic theory, uh, so we consider a Newton dynamics. So this uh, we already talked about in, in the first lecture, uh, but I want to remind you uh, the setting a little bit. So here for second order system or Newton dynamics, we consider um, n particles, uh, xi, vi, so uh, which is the xi is the position, vi is the velocity. So those particles are interacting with each other via the two body force, k. So when k is the inverse square law, or k is the gravitational force or Coulomb force, uh, the expected limit is the famous flash of person equation um, return in this way. So F, um, so F equals to F T X V is the um, first best density and rho T X here is the, is the, is the special density. So here the star means convolution. Okay. So I won't talk about a lot about the second order system. So most of the time, uh, we will focus on first order system is uh, uh, you can think uh, the first order system for instance here uh, if you add noise uh, the, the, this part the noise part here we also consider stochastic uh, setting from this lecture um, so second first order system can be think as a zero mass limit of second order system but uh, uh, it has its own uh, merit and the applications. So, um, so, so when K is singular, the difficulty uh, of the first order system, the mean field limit problem of first order system is, like, is, uh, is easier in some sense, uh, but it also capture the difficulty, like K uh, of the singularity of, of the problem of the kernel. Okay, uh, let's just uh, briefly uh, recall the setting. So for the first order system, first order system, xi is the position. So the velocity, the velocity depends on the two body interaction of all other particles. And, uh, and we, we may add noise there. So it, we call the first order system here, IPS, interacting particle system. So this is the strength of the noise. If you put uh, sigma n equals to zero, so we, uh, this is a purely deterministic system. So if sigma n is just a constant, the positive constant is a, it's a stochastic system. Sometimes you can also consider a vanishing viscosity case uh, like uh, in, in random matrices theory. So we can choose uh, sigma n as uh, a constant. For instance, we can choose sigma n uh, as one over n, for instance. So then we have a vanishing viscosity type uh, noise, uh, which actually is very important uh, in study of the eigenvalue distributions of random uh, matrices. Okay, so we believe uh, at least for uh, for some setting like uh, K is Lipschitz uh, is Lipschitz, 
uh, classical works tells us if we send the number of particles n goes to infinity, we can recover uh, the mean field dynamics, or we can use the mean field dynamics to approximate uh, the interacting particle system. So in the following, I use a, a mean field dynamics, MFD, to represent the PDE, and I use uh, IPS to represent uh, the interacting particle system. Um, so here, uh, there are some motivations or some applications uh, of particle system. Um, so as I said, in the first lecture, the integrating particle system can represent a lot of things, right? So the particles can be ions and electrons in plasma physics or, um, or galaxies in large scales, uh, cosmological models. Um, and so there are also like, you can use those to modeling social uh, behavior, like opinion dynamics of uh, flocking or swarming models in bioscience. Okay, um, but I want to emphasize, uh, because this, uh, this is one of my recent works, um, we can also use in like particle system to sample a distribution, like uh, in distribution sampling algorithm, uh, for instance, stain variational gradient or our recent uh, algorithm, um, uh, in particular done with uh, Zabanshan and uh, uh, Hashani, so we consider uh, um, a single decent problem using interacting particle system. So we let the particle uh, move according to the direction of the single potential. So, uh, and uh, this is a very uh, effective algorithm compared to the classical, uh, to, to the previous algorithm in the literature. Okay. And um, there's a difficult, but so particle system, Uh, the particle system are very easy to understand. Um, so, but it's very too, very hard to study um, both numerically and computationally. So, uh, it's very famous uh, mechanism called, called the curse of dimensionality. So, in typically, right, in typical physical setting, you can think uh, the number of particles is 10 to 25. Um, so, it's almost impossible to study uh, this amount number of particles uh, to trace them exactly, but that's almost impossible. Okay, uh, so the next page I copy uh, almost from uh, my PhD advisor and the collaborator, uh, Pierre Emmanuel Jaban. Uh, so, so this is a discussion and, uh, on, on how large the order of the number of particles n. So in different settings, uh, n, the, the capital N can be different, right? So, um, so this is just uh, some discussion. But I want to emphasize, right, in physical setting, like in plasma physics and astrophysics, so the number can be really large, like 10 to 25 or even like 10 to 60, right, in dark matter. Uh, but, so actually, right, if you do numerics, uh, like in sampling distribution algorithm, so N is not that large. So N actually is small, like uh, in the order of 10 to 3, like 1,000. Um, so if N is not that large, so actually it's very critical to know, to quantify how fast the convergence uh, can be. So if you just know it converges, right, but n is really large, right, no quantitative result, that's not uh, good enough to quantify the error between continual no model like PDE uh, with uh, the particle system, okay. Uh, as I said, I already uh, talked about the Dubushin estimate in last lecture, in lecture two, um, so, so classical work like in last, last century, last uh, 60s or 70s, there are many results in different uh, uh, community like in kinetic theory or probability, uh, there are many results, right? Give you the mean field limit type result, uh, convergence from particle system to continuum PDEs. So there are many results. Um, so 
Um, so I give you several examples which uh, I will uh, talk about, like Bill Safar kernel. Um, so the Bill Safar kernel, so the person kernel, so Bill Safar kernel, if you choose the KX uh, as a Bill Safar kernel, so the first order system before we give you, right, as in goes to infinity, we give you the vorticity form of 2D Euler or 2D Navier Stokes. Uh, but uh, the Poisson kernel, uh, so the Poisson kernel if we, uh, is very famous, like uh, a gravitational force or coolant force is the Poisson kernel, right? If you choose positive, it's repulsive. If you choose negative, uh, if you choose negative here, uh, it's, it's attractive. Uh, later, in maybe in the uh, in the last lecture in the uh, in the last week, so we will treat a general family of gradient type flows. So k equals to minus v, and in particular, we can do the problem. So v is uh, is some attractive potential, uh, but it can be not then attractive. So v is some logarithmic type attractive kernels. Okay. So these three uh, are the canonical, like uh, very important um, singular kernels. We will show you how to treat using recent methods um, developed. So, but uh, so even even classical methods fails for system for very singular, in particular for those uh, very f physical kernels. But uh, they are still very important in many applications. So actually, classical measure, uh, as I, as I, as I showed you, like last uh, uh, in last week in lecture two, the Dubuisson estimate or the following, I will show you the coupling method. They are essentially the same. Um, so they are very important in many applications. Right, when you see a problem, when you try the mean field limit problem, so classical measure like uh, based on the very very idea. Um, in the cause elipsis theory of the bell um in ODEs or SDs, those are very important. That's the first things you should do try. Uh, okay, so now, so now let's uh, just briefly, let's just briefly go through the coupling method. So uh, let's assume uh, K is uh, Lipschitz and bounded. We made very strong assumptions. And, uh, and this K is uh, in the form in lecture two. Okay. And so we consider the particle system one. So this is particle system one. Okay. Uh, let's consider particle system one. So which is, is a intaking particle system. And uh, so each particle, um, so it was driven by uh, independent copies of noise, uh, DWTI. So WTI are uh, brown, uh, brown emotions uh, or Wiener process. So initially we choose uh, the particle X0i satisfy initial distribution F0. So F0 is an initial distribution uh, is a probability measure. Uh, you can think uh, it uh, even has a density. Okay, so uh, we are interested in the problem. I mean, if you limit the problem, so let's choose mu n. So mu n is the empirical measure, um, and time t. So which is just uh, okay, which is defined before, uh, but here it's a little bit different because x g t right x g t solves a stochastic differential equation. So x g t is a random variable, right? So for each particle and time t is a random variable. So mu and t is a random probability uh, mirror. Uh, so this is not a. So this is not a very precise notion, um, but uh, let's just uh, use this, right? This means mu and t. Uh, if you fix omega, the fix the sample, right? So it's a probability uh, mirror, right? But the it's a sum, uh, it, right? It's a right. So for each uh, each uh, realization is a probability mirror, right? So it's a random probability mirror. So we want to show this random probability mirror mu and t will converge to a deterministic uh, uh, probability mirror. So so actually, usually, right? What uh, we want to show is this mu n uh, will converge to some Dirac uh, f uh, in this space. Okay. 
But in the following, we showed uh, we actually show this, but uh, in a different formulation. So we actually get the convergence of marginals. Uh, so in the general framework part of propagation of chaos, uh, which is a notion very close to mean field limit. So if you see, right, in order to show this convergence, uh, we pass to the convergence of marginals. Uh, yeah, I will explain that later. But now, um, so let's just talk about the coupling method. So uh, with this very strong assumption K is Lipschitz and bounded, uh, we expect actually this can be, this is exactly like what we did in the Wush estimate. So then, but uh, we have now, we have a brown emotion term here. So the mean field dynamics uh, is given by right, the, the, this type of uh, aggregation diffusion type equation. And this velocity field, this is velocity field, is given by the integral type operator, or if k is the, the form we choose before, like in the first order system, I just showed you. So then this velocity field is given by convolution, right? But here is slightly general. Okay, but anyway, uh, since K is Lipschitz and bounded, so the real potency for the mean field dynamics is fine. So you can just uh, use in peak iteration um, as people did right, in Cauchy Lipschitz theory. Okay, so, um, so we can cook, right? the idea of coupling method is the following. So we cook up N copies of YI, so YI are uh, IID. So the law of YI uh, solve the mean field dynamics. So the mean field, so F, right, the solution F of the mean field dynamics is just the law of the following system two. So by the way, choose N copies of them. Um, so, so the coupling is called coupling method because we choose uh, uh, the same noise, basically choose the same noise here, here. Okay, so the idea is just, okay, if we can compare the distance between xi and yi, and um, so, so then we can show the mu n is actually close to uh, the limit f. Okay. So you can, you can see, uh, you, you can see all of those in uh, Schnittmann's notes, uh, topics in propagation of chaos in the first uh, section. And so, so what we only need to do is to compare the distance between xi and yi. So this is what I'm doing here. Uh, so let's take the difference of uh, two SDs, right? It's SD system one and SD system two. So we take the difference. So now the noise disappear, but uh, so we can just use ETO formula since there's no stochastic part uh, like explicitly so there's no the high order, second order correction, but uh, we should know here xi and yi as random variables, right? Uh, a stochastic process. Okay, so we now we choose one particular method. We choose one particular method, uh, particular quantity uh, qt. So qt here is just uh, the. Uh, just the the norm the norm the okay it's just two norm right basically two norm but it's a two norm squared right uh, in the end we take the square root we, so we get two norm okay so we we take the time derivative of qt right qt is just uh, defined as the sum of xi minus yi squared right so we use this form or you can use p norm as well but uh, if you use two norm that's easier because uh, it's easy to take derivative, but uh, essentially they're all the same. Okay, so we take the derivative, right? So using Ito formula and uh, substitute uh, the, the, this equation, right? So then we substitute this equation here, right? So we get uh, this formula, we get uh, this formula. Okay, so the essential part, right? So we can use Cauchy-Schwarz equation uh, to recover one uh, QT right, uh, on the right hand side. But now we need to compare, right, we need to really um, bound the distance between uh, this term, or velocity field, x and particle xi, 
and the velocity field and uh, position yi in the limit, right? We need to compare those two terms. So, I mean, the, there's no medical here, right? Exactly as uh, previous uh, computation. Uh, as I showed you, right? We, we just like the computation I showed you in lecture two, uh, the computation we want to compare the two trajectories of ODEs, right? So it's exactly the same. We just uh, interpolating two terms, right? This is one term. So now uh, xg is the same, right? And uh, this this uh, minus this term, add this term, right? Uh, minus this term, then add this term, right? Add this term. Okay. So the previous one term, right? Uh, this term, so becomes three terms, right? And we can bound the first two terms uh, using. Uh, using the Lipschitz uh, property of K, right? So this is the Lipschitz constant. This is Lipschitz constant of K. Uh, this is Lipschitz constant of K, right? So now it's uh, Xi minus, uh, Xi minus Yi, right? Xi minus Yi. So here is uh, uh, Xj minus Yj, right? So we get this term and uh, this term Okay, and we keep the last term here. Is the last last term here? Okay, uh, uh, so you can take this very easily uh, using cauchy schwarz uh, We can bound the first two terms very easily. We just recover one QT and another terms. Uh, uh, I think it's just a QT, right? So just uh, we, we can recover the QT, but uh, we need pass a factor. Uh, we need there, there's a factor there. Okay, so the first term can be controlled very easily. But how to control the last term, right? Uh, let's see, what is the last term? The last term is, okay, let's fix uh, yi, right? Uh, and uh, here, we changing yj, but this is a mean, right? This is a mean. So basically, this is the, uh, this is a comparison between the average and the mean. So it's just a law of large number, right? If you, if you set n goes to infinity, Right, the, uh, uh, the mean, arith arithmetic mean will convert to the expectation, right? So this is just a law of large number. Okay, so uh, you can check the details, right? It's, uh, it's just a uh, uh, very easy commutation. So you can get the following estimate, right? So in particular, you need to use this uh, cauchy um, uh inequality, okay? So you get the following estimate. Uh, okay, so note, uh, we put an expectation here. Okay, so now uh, this term, this term can be controlled by uh, Grunwald, and we want to show uh, the last term, we want to show the last term here will be very small. So how to do that, right? Uh, it's very easy. So now uh, we can fix i, right? Because for each i, it's all the same. Right, the the particle system are indistinguishable. Right, those particles are indistinguishable. We can change the indices. So each indices are, are basically the same. Okay, so we can just do that. Uh, we fix i equals to one, and we just want to compare uh, a typical term right here. So that's exactly this. Right, that's exactly this. Okay, so we just do the commutation. Uh, there's a there's a techniques right. This is uh, very useful, right? So when we want to uh, compute the expectation of a square, right? Uh, inside a square, there are um, there are summations. So your idea is just okay. Uh, so we're using two indices. So here is j and k, and expand uh, those square. So now we complete the square. So there are n square terms in total. But the observation is the following. So on the off diagonal terms, so if, if j is not equal to k, so everything will be zero. So for the off diagonal terms, so then it, then it is off diagonal terms, vanish, off diagonal term all vanish, so, but the diagonal term, right? Uh, so, so, so there are n terms in the diagonal, right, which might not be, uh, which is not, uh, which which uh, which can be non-zero, 
actually it usually is uh, positive, uh, but they are bounded. So they are in order one since K is bounded. So all the diagonal terms is, is bounded, right? They say C, right? It's bounded by constant C. So there are N terms. So divides by normalization and square, you get, we get the, the, the order is, is in the order of one over square to N. So then is uh, in the end, right? So QT can be absorbed by um, Grunwald. And the last term here is in the order of one over N. So we can just to get the theory, that's the following. Uh, so this is slightly different compared to Schneidman's uh, notes. Uh, so uh, you, you can prove this. Uh, then there is, okay, so the, the expectation of the two norm, but we take the supreme uh, up to time t, where this is uniform in time uh, estimate, but here the constant c in the uh, right hand side actually depends on t. So, but once you fix t, this c is fixed, this constant, universal constant is fixed, and uh, you get the convergence uh, in the order of square root of n. So this is actually optimal because this is the order um, given by the law of Lagrange number. Okay. And so you can check, right? Uh, but you, you can check the following. So this estimate actually implies the convergence of the following. So the two marginal, uh, so let's say F, T, Z, two marginal. So rho n two is the two marginal, uh, two marginal of, uh, of rho n, so rho n is the joint distribution of, of x1 t to x n t. Uh, so, you, you, so the previous estimate implies the reconvergence of two marginal uh, towards um, the tensor product of the limit. So this is the propagation of chaos, actually. Uh, so I, I will say more later. So in this uh, in this notes, I list uh, several results, recent results, and uh, and uh, on first order system and on second order system. Uh, but I will skip that. Mm, I will skip skip that. So now, uh, so now let me introduce the general framework of uh, uh, of the relative entropy method. And so this framework actually used uh, in many places. Uh, when deriving effective equations, effective PDEs. Okay, so let's recall, uh, let's recall the system we are considering. Uh, we just uh, use the first order system as an example and uh, the interaction kernel is given in the specific form. Uh, it's already very general enough, um, but you can consider more more general one, but this, uh, let's just use this formulation. Okay, so this is the first order system, but uh, we, we changed the framework. Um, we changed the previous, like, uh, framework uh, to the following one, right? Uh, to the statistical point of view. Like in distribution estimate, actually it's very strong estimate, but here uh, in the following, we, we, we change the point of view. So instead of just look, look at trajectory wise uh, of the particles, we look at the joint distribution of those particles. So here, uh, rho n, uh, so rho n, rho n actually is the joint distribution of n particles and uh, so if you use the Liouville equation, uh, if you use the, uh, sorry, if you use the Ito, Ito formula and just apply to this, right, phi is a test function, if you're using Ito formula and apply to uh, x1t to xnt, and then you integration by part uh, and, uh, and write the equation of rho t in the Wick formulation. Uh, so you will get uh, the following equation, the Liouville equation. Okay, 
but actually, uh, this Jouvier equation is exactly as what we did in the first lecture. Uh, but this Jouvier is on very high dimension, right? So the, the previous one, we just write uh, F, uh, F, T, X, V, and the, uh, this is a phase space density, and you can do that, you can write the Jouvier equation as well, but this is just a, a first order system uh, for many, many uh, particles, right? Uh, but essentially the same, right? Uh, the only different part is now we have noise, right? They possibly have noise, right? This part actually comes from uh, second order correction in ETO formula. Uh, okay, and this is uh, uh, this is uh, velocity field, right? Velocity field. So this is velocity field, right? So it's, uh, velocity field is something like this. So V uh, T X1 Xn equals to, this is uh, in Rnd. This is in Rd to N, right? And the Vi, the Vi coordinate is just the velocity field or the force uh, field by the ice particle. So it's just this. Okay. So, so Roy is symmetric. Uh, so symmetric means, right, if you change the indices, you permute the indices, uh, the density doesn't change. Uh, so it, it, it just comes from all those particles are indistinguishable. So you cannot really distinguish uh, which part particle is which. You cannot uh, distinguish those particles. Um, Roy uh, is not physical quantity. It's not, a, you cannot measure it by, by, by experiment. So physical uh, quantities like uh, temperature, pressure, can only be obtained by doing some integral uh, of the marginals. So this is uh, actually the, uh, the, uh, the basic idea of the kinetic uh, uh, theory uh, of uh, dilute gas, for instance, right? Um, okay. So uh, what is a marginal? I used them before, but uh, let's restate the definition. So the marginal, K marginal of rho is just defined as uh, the integral of rho n uh, from the, the k plus one variable to xn, right? From dx, uh, from dx k plus one to the dxn. So, okay, so rho n k is, is also a symmetric probability mirror, and it's also symmetric. Right, because it's also symmetric because rho n is symmetric. Uh, the u rho y, right, when, uh, to derive an effective equation is called the BBJKY hierarchy. So what's that? So if you write, if you write the evolution equation of rho n k, so basically you just integrate uh, all the variables from uh, x k plus one to x n. So you will get uh, an evolution equation of rho n k. But if you find, since this is an interacting particle system, even after you use uh, the indiscrete, uh, the symmetric property, so you will find uh, the evolution equation involve uh, rho n k plus one. So for instance, if you write the uh, evolution equation of rho n one, so it will involve two marginal, rho n two. Uh, so if you write all the equations, it's called BBDKY hierarchy, uh, let me just give you one example, right? So if you're integrating the Liouville equation of uh, uh, with respect to x2 to xn and using the symmetry property of xn, uh, using the symmetry property of rho uh, n, so if you get the following equation. So this is this equation, uh, this equation is the, second, the first equation in BBGKY hierarchy. And in the BBJKY hierarchy, if you send n to infinity, right, like this term will become one, and uh, so rho n one will become rho infinity one. So you still get a hierarchy, and this hierarchy is called mean field hierarchy, right? For instance, if you send n goes to infinity, so if you can get uh, something like this. Uh, let's say this is just a sigma. Okay, uh, this is rho infinity one. Okay, 
So you still, uh, you will get a hierarchy called mean field hierarchy. Okay, so now uh, the U rho Y, right, to do this, uh, the, the derivation of effective equation is okay. So let's assume everything is tensorized. So like rho is something like rho infinity uh, K, right? Uh, and time T is tensorized, is tensorized. So which is just uh, the tensor product of the one marginal, okay? So if you make this assumption and you show uh, the mean field hierarchy has exactly one solution given by the tensorized form, so you can get uh, the, the, the mean field limit. Um, let, let, let's just forget that formulation and just compare, uh, just a, you made, made very strong assumption uh, called molecule chaos. Let's assume rho n2 is tensorized like this, okay? So then we can say, we can substitute, substitute this assumption into the first equation uh, in the PVGKY hierarchy. So you will find, if you set angles to infinity, right? So you just get the mean field dynamics, right? So because right now this is a tensor product, x, rho and one, y, so we can take out of uh, this part, uh, we can, so, excuse me. So we can take out, uh, not take out, we can take in uh, the integral. Uh, we can do the integral first. So we get the convolution, right? So then is the equation uh, of rho n1 tx. Okay, so we recover the mean field dynamics. So actually this is the idea, right, by Bertzmann. So in the derivation of Bertzmann equation, so he made this very strong assumption so he can recover the Bertzmann model, the Bertzmann equation uh, for the collision model of dilute uh, gases. Okay, but uh, this problem here, right, it's just a hypothesis. Uh, we can assume initially uh, the data is IID or uh, data, data is tensorized. Uh, but the problem is the following. Uh, we cannot have this property as long as we run the dynamics. So because uh, those are interacting particles, those are inter interacting particles, and uh, as long as the interaction exists, right, so there will be correlations. So um, that's not true, right? So in general, molecule chaos is not true. So in so to, to, do, to, to do the realization, to do the problem, to, to do the derivation of Boltzmann equation initially, actually, this is the initial problem. So Keck uh, in 19, uh, 1956, right, uh, introduced a relaxed notion called Keck's chaos. So initial idea is to, okay, so instead of considering the collisional model, uh, so we consider a, a, a Markovian process so it's nonlinear, and we want to recover re recover the the Boltzmann equation from some uh, uh, stochastic process. Right, this is a original idea, and we borrow all of this framework uh, into uh, mean field limit. Okay, so uh, uh, so so propagation of chaos is actually just a propagation of Keck's chaos. So what is Keck's chaos? So Keck's chaos is a relaxed, uh, relaxed notion of IID, right? Uh, so basically it's just an asymptotic independence. For a finite, for a finite group, right? Okay, so when I say IID, right? So uh, it's just, uh, let's say if n particles are IID, so that means uh, So the distribution is tensorized, right, like this. So you can just write this as a tensor product, okay? Uh, but this is too strong, right? But initially you can assume this, right? Um, okay, so what is Keck's chaos, right? We say a sequence of probability measure, symmetric probability measure are uh, rho bar chaotic. So rho bar is a limit. So rho bar actually is in lower dimension of space, right? It's, uh, it's, it's a probability mirror uh, in the space E. Okay, so what does uh, 
Roba chaotic means. It means you take k marginal of this sequence of rho n, so this sequence will converge to rho bar k as n goes to infinity. Uh, so what does this mean? This means if you take any finite number of particles, right, let's say k equals one, or just pick one particle, k equals two, you just pick a pair of particles. So if you say an angles to infinity, um, so rho n two or rho n k will become tensorized. So it will become uh, independent, independent. So that's why I call it, this is asymptotic independence uh, for a finite group of particles. Okay, so propagation of chaos is just, okay, uh, we propagate this property. Let's say uh, usually, right, the work, uh, the following theory we will present is in the, in the flavor, right, we assume initially uh, those particles are IID or uh, chaotic, like Joba chaotic. So then we want, to, we want to show this property will be preserved uh, when the time t becomes positive, when we run the dynamics of interacting particle system or the mean field dynamics. Okay. So uh, propagation of chaos is just uh, the diagram commutes, the following, uh, this diagram commutes. Okay. So, so on the, on the left-hand side, we, we run the interacting particle system. So we get uh, the distribution and time t on the right hand side, we run the dynamics of uh, mean field dynamics. So we get the distribution, uh, get a row bar T, right? Get the solution to the PDE and time T, right? So this is our assumption. Uh, our goal is to show, right? This property will be preserved. Okay, uh, it's, it's clear now, right? Uh, just a remark. Um, so Kex chaos, uh, is, so what, what do we mean by weak convergence, right? Everybody know, uh, probably uh, most of you know this, but I just uh, uh, make this precise. So weak convergence means, right, if you give you test function, uh, so usually those test function, oh, sorry. So phi i is CBE, is bounded continuous. You take those uh, test function, and and integrate against uh, the, the distributions or the mirrors, rho and k, you will get the convergence, right? And of course, uh, this weak convergence is, uh, is weaker than strong convergence, right? Uh, strongest, like uh, the convergence in L1. In the following, I, uh, we use relative entropy, we can recover a strong convergence. Uh, but uh, uh, as a compensation, we need stronger assumptions uh, at the initial time Okay, uh, so another remark, uh, uh, so another remark on Keg's chaos. So, so let's, so you can, you can see more detailed discussion uh, in Ghost Notes or in our previous um, review called Mean Field Limit for Stochastic Systems. Um, so here is just uh, several remarks. Uh, the first, the Keg's chaos is equivalent to uh, the following two character characterizations, right? Uh, previously, right, we need uh, like, uh, so Keg's chaos is, is very strong. Um, like uh, we need the convergence for any K marginal, right? For any K is fixed. Okay, but actually, right, since, er since rho n is symmetric, so we only need uh, rho n two, the two marginal converge. Uh, you can check this, uh, not very long proof. Uh, so actually by, uh, by symmetry, right, uh, since rho n is symmetric, uh, rho n two, right, the convergence of two marginal is sufficient. So, but the convergence of one marginal is not. So why? Uh, you can check this uh, very easily, right? So, uh, so, so I used the, the notes uh, annotated after the real lecture. So there are already a lot of things here. Um, but this is an example uh, you can check uh, the convergence of one marginal does not guarantee the convergence of any K marginal, right? So this is an example. Also, uh, the convergence of marginals 
implies the convergence of empirical measure in law. Uh, so so let, let's, let, let me just delete everything here. Right, we already used the, the empirical measure before. Right, we already used the empirical measure before. Okay. So uh, previously, right, so the KX chaos, so let's say rho n is, uh, is rho bar chaotic, uh, KX chaotic. So means, right, uh, rho n k converts to rho bar tensor product k uh, and then goes to infinity, right? So this is KX chaos. Um, but this is also equivalent to the following. Um, so mu n, so this is equivalent to the following. Uh, the convergence of, let's use x, let's use xi, we just want to use xi, xi, xn. So this, uh, so this x1 to xn has joint distribution rho n, and the empirical mirror is just the random probability mirror uh, of the positions of those n particles. So mu n, so you can think of this mu n as a projection of uh, of rho n, right? Rho n is a is a probability measure, but it is symmetric, right? which is a very strong constraint um, in E n. But uh, if you project rho n to dimension one, right, like in E in the space E, right, you get a random uh, probability measure. So the convergence of k marginal, like k for any k, so actually is equivalent to the convergence of mu n traverse uh, the Dirac uh, rho bar, so in probability mirror in PPE. So this is convergence in law, right? So in the end, it will recover a deterministic mirror. So when we write this in in probability space of the probability space. So it's Dirac, right? It's deterministic. And those are all equivalent, right? You can see the proof, right, in uh, either in Gauss nodes or in uh, Schneidman's nodes. So let's, uh, okay. Uh, so here, last time, and I made a remark here, um, and the convergence, the KX chaos, uh, this type of convergence actually uh, like propagation of chaos somehow is weaker than the previous distributions estimate. So in distributions estimates, right, uh, so F1, 0, F2, 0 are just any two probability mirrors, uh, which can be uh, anything, right? It's not just a, a projection of symmetric uh, probability mirrors, right? Um, so it can be much general, right? F10, F20, F1t, F2t, right? Can be deterministic, right? But uh, even for deterministic one, we have like a very uh, neat uh, uh, estimate, uh, contribution estimate. But in our setting, like the propagation of chaos setting, right? Usually we uh, we made the, the following assumption: we assume initial particles are iid, uh, and um, so we want to get, the goal is to get the convergence of k marginal towards to the limit. It's kind of asymptotic independence uh, uh, result, right? It's, it's weaker actually than to Bush investment. Right? Of course, you can still do the same framework uh, for like a uh, Bush result, right? You can still get, uh, recover that. You can, you can, because this is stronger, right? This is stronger. Right? This implies the, uh, the convergence uh, of k marginals, right, the kx chaos. Okay. Uh, and the, the last remark is, uh, is a definitive theory. Uh, so this is a, a theory relating to uh, exchangeable mirrors, or here we call it symmetric mirrors. Uh, so more modern name is called the Huvit Savar theory. So the real theory is the following, right? If P is a probability mirror in E to infinity, right? This is, a, this is like E times E times E, et cetera, right? E infinity. So we can write uh, this mirror P 
as uh, uh, so so as something like this. So if this x on n, right? So it will become something like this. So we just uh, look at the pn, uh, px on the first uh, n coordinate, right? So it will be uh, the integral, right, uh, of some tensor product. So, but if rho n is just a symmetric, right, it's just a symmetric uh, in e n, right, not uh, all, right, not uh, in e infinity. So then the equal becomes uh, uh, approximated, right? So rho n can be approximated in uh, this form. In this form, uh, there are more discussion in in ghost notes. You you can you can see that. Okay. Uh, so now I will just move to the relative entropy. Uh, before I re uh, I go to the the real relative entropy method. So let's talk about the motivation. Uh, you can find the the details uh, of this part in my paper. Uh, with PA manual, the 2016 paper. So we consider where uh, there we consider um, an interacting particle system uh, in second order. So xi vi uh, denotes position velocity of the uh, ice particle. So we can also add noise there, but this noise is only on the velocity variable. Uh, like uh, this model, this can be used to model the random collisions uh, on particles with certain rate, okay? Um, so as n goes to infinity, we know, right, people knows, the expected limit is the Vlasov uh, or mccain vlasov system. Okay, so when there's noise, usually this is called a Vlasov system. When, when sigma is uh, positive, uh, this is called Vlasov system. Uh, otherwise, it's called uh, Vlasov system. Uh, if sigma is positive, it's called McCain Vlasov system. Otherwise, it's just called Vlasov system. And rho right, is the um, microscopic density or spatial density. So F is a phase space density. Okay. So if you choose sigma n equals zero, and K is uh, the, the, the coolant force or gravitational force, this is uh, the limited system is called Vlasov person. Uh, we, we discussed several times. Uh, so we made a following observation, okay? So if we use relative entropy and uh, we compare uh, F tilde and F, so both are two solutions to the Vlasov system. Uh, we assume F is strong, uh, F tilde is a weak solution. F is a strong solution, uh, which satisfies some uh, assumptions, right? In particular is the following one. Uh, so this assumption really comes from uh, when we want when we want to control uh, relative entropy. Um, so we need some weighted uh, CKP, uh, zero Kuban pin square inequality. So we need this assumption, right? You need, uh, and at this time you don't know, you don't need to know uh, exactly why sigma f comes from. And uh, so anyway, so we need we have two solutions. F is smooth solution, strong solution. F two i is a weak solution. Uh, let's assume this weak solution dissipates entropy, and then we can get uh, uniqueness, right? Uh, if F, if the system has one smooth solution, then in some larger functional space, the weak solution is also unique. Uh, this is a very famous argument. Uh, uh, people use this uh, uh, like uh, in, in conservation laws, right, uh, as well. Um, okay. So, so let's just uh, tell you, right, uh, what is the relative entropy, right? This very famous notion, right? Uh, uh, another name is called uh, KO divergence. Um, okay, so let's compare, right? Let's define HT as the relative entropy between F delta and F. So F, uh, okay. So you can check this easily since F delta and F are both probability mirrors. So they are all positive. So HT is all is always positive, right? Since it's a rel relative entropy between uh, two probability mirrors. Uh, okay, uh, you can use in JSON to show this is positive. Okay. 
Or you can, uh, so uh, I, I guess you can just uh, something like, uh, let's say you would take F, F tilde F log F tilde F. So here, um, so, so here, I, I'm not sure, here is a plus one minus X, right? So here you get some function X, log X plus one minus X. So this function is always positive. So you get this is always positive, uh, but I might have made a mistake right here. Maybe it's minus one plus X, right? So, uh, but you can check that. Uh, this is one way to say this is uh, always positive. And uh, HT, right, uh, but, but these are always, uh, uh, are well known. So HT is not a metric. Uh, the relative energy is not a metric, but it's a well known quantity. Uh, people can use this to quantify convergence uh, between two property mirrors. Uh, in particular, people know the CKP inequality, right? So let's say if F tilde and F have, uh, have densities, right? They are so we know the classical CKP inequality, uh, Cedro Kuban Pinsker inequality is the following. Uh, it's just two uh, HT. Okay. So once we can show HT goes to zero, right, we know F tilde minus F converge. Uh, so so, uh, so the, the L1 distance is also small, right? Uh, so if this, uh, uh, we can control HT, right? We can also control L1 distance, right? So that's, uh, um, yeah, that, that's well known, that's well known. Okay, so here we assume uh, the weak solution. Uh, this actually is crucial. The weak solution dissipates, uh, dissipates relative, uh, dissipates entropy. Right? So this is entropy term, and uh, this is uh, the Fisher information term. Uh, but this derivative is only x on the velocity, right? Since uh, the noise is uh, degenerate, right? The noise is only on the velocity variable as well. Uh, so this is our assumption. Usually, weak solution can be can satisfy this, right? If you're using like uh, smoothization passing to the limit. Uh, okay, so this works. We assume solution satisfies this uh, entropy bond. So we can do the computation. So we can do the computation. Uh, yeah, so first we expand HT, right? We expand HT. So it's F tilde log F tilde over F, right? So it becomes difference. Uh, and this part, right? This part can be substituted by the entropy bond. And uh, the following part, this part will be, uh, will be given, right? will be expanded by using uh, F tilde is a weak solution. And we use log F since F is smooth solution, right? We can assume F is C1 and we can even assume F is always positive. So uh, we use log F as, uh, so we can, so, so log F, right, will be, uh, will be non-zero, right? Will be well-defined everywhere. So log F will be used as test function and using the weak solution, uh, we're using F2 as a weak solution, right? We can have the following uh, inequality, following equality. So substitute this equality to the equation. So we can get, uh, we can get the estimate of the uh, relative entropy. So this is what we get. Uh, this is what we get. Okay. Uh, so this R is the discrepancy. Uh, you will see right, this is defined like a following and uh, all other term involving the noise will be given by those three terms and those three terms can be can be can be returned in one single term so uh, I, I think okay last time we stop here but uh, since this is recording re-recording it's a little bit fast uh, but you can check this uh, this is just a uh, Uh, it's kind of the dissipation of relative entropy, right? Like Fisher information is the dissipation of entropy, and this term is the dissipation of relative entropy. And this is this term is uh, negative. We can throw away this term, so we can treat uh, the 
weak, strong uniqueness argument based on Vlasov or McCain Vlasov system at the same time. So with or without noise, we can treat them because the last term can be just throw away. Uh, when we're doing the argument uh, later, right? So th those will be in lecture four. So we throw away this term. Uh, and we try to uh, control, we try to uh, to complete the, pro, uh, the the control of HD. Okay, uh, so I, I will stop here, and uh, from lecture four, um, so you can you can see uh, everything here. Right, we will go back to the real estimate of the relative energy using a weighted version of uh, uh, zero Kuban pin square inequality. Okay, so I, I will stop here.